Messiah. He came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to save his people from their sins. But he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered tremendously. He died and was buried. But on the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. The resurrection of the Messiah from the dead was the most significant event that the world has ever seen. And what better way to teach our children about the depth of this long-awaited victory over sin and death than by telling them that a pink rabbit snuck in through the air vent of their house in the middle of the night and left baskets full of chocolate eggs and a bunch of pink Walmart crap hidden under the cushions. And then after that, after they've nearly had a diabetic seizure, you take them down to the local cathedral and observe the ancient mass of Ishtar, the Assyrian and Babylonian goddess of war and sex. Now, does something about this seem a little strange to anyone else out there? I mean, is that a little weird? So what is this Easter deal anyways? I remember being a bit confused as a kid. I mean, what's up with the Easter bunny? What does that have to do with the resurrection, you know? Although we convince our kids that rabbits lay colorful eggs in the bushes, we know that this is not reality. This story is not as innocent and cute as many think. Right. Keep me covered. What with? Just keep me covered. Too late! Uh, There he is! Where? There! What, behind the rabbit? It is the rabbit. You silly sod! What? You got us all worked up! Well, that's no ordinary rabbit! That's the most foul, cruel, and bad-tempered rodent you ever set eyes on! You tit! I saw my arm and I was so scared. Look, that rabbit's got a vicious street a mile wide. It's a killer. Get stuck. It'll do you a treat, mate. Oh, you yeah? manky Scots git. I'm warning you. What's he do? Nibble your bum? He's got huge, sharp... He can leap about. Look at the bones. Go on, boys. Chop his head off. Right, silly little beater. One rabbit two coming right up. Look. Jesus Christ! So, what's going on here? Where does this all come from anyways? Yeah, I don't want to make up any any more fictional stories than there already are floating around out there. So let us just consult the mother of all churches and see what she has to say about all this. Easter. The English term relates to Estre, a Teutonic goddess of the rising light of day and spring. That's interesting. Okay. So what does that have to do with the resurrection, the the goddess here? You know, some of the other names for this ancient Teutonic mother goddess, they include Ishtar, Estre, Estarte, Ostarte, Ostera, Astareth. These are all names that originated from the original mother goddess Samaramis, the mother of Tammuz. In short, Ishtar was the wife of Baal, also called the queen of heaven. Wait a second here. Ishtar was the wife of Baal? Baal Sabab? Satan's wife? That's just great. I mean, I'm really glad for Ishtar. You know, she, she made a good choice. Scholars of comparative mythology draw a parallel between the Egyptian goddess Isis and the Babylonian goddess Ishtar. Ishtar was called Astrath, or the Queen of Heaven, by the Israelites. You can read that in Judges chapter 2, or uh, Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 44, maybe. This mother goddess, well known in the Eastern world, was frequently worshipped as the goddess of sex. Orgies and temple prostitutes were often used in her worship. Now, what in the world does the goddess of sex have to do with the resurrection of of Christ? If you read what the churches have to say, they'll actually admit that the Easter egg 
might come from ancient paganism. Oh, what a light way of saying it. Let's look at this a little bit farther. So what is an Easter egg? What's the deal with the Easter bunny? Where, do the, where does this stuff come from anyways? And they just make it up out of thin air or what? Well, the answers to this question, they aren't hard to pin down. The origins of these things are very well documented. All you have to do is take a couple of hours, do some unbiased research in any decent library, and you'll find all these things out for yourself very easily. Here's the original Easter story in a nutshell, real fast, okay? All right. According to the ancient historian Josephus, Nimrod, you know, the king of Babylon, was punished for his rebellion at the Tower of Babel by Noah's son Shem. His body was cut into many pieces and sent to the surrounding communities as a warning against idolatry. Nimrod's wife, Samaramis, the queen of Babylon, she claimed that he did not actually die, but rather ascended into heaven and had become the sun god. She, of course, being the wife of the sun, had to make herself into a goddess. I mean, that's just automatic, you know. Now, Samaramis taught that the moon was a goddess that went through a 28-day cycle and ovulated when it was a full moon. She then claimed that she came down from the moon in a giant moon egg that fell into the Euphrates River and hashed open, and she came out the bare-breasted, you know, Ishtar. Th this incident, according to her story, supposedly happened at the time of the first full moon after the spring equinox. Does that ring any bells out there? Just check it. Samaramis then became known as Ishtar, and her moon egg became known as Ishtar's egg. Ishtar, a.k.a. Samaramis, she claimed that she had become pregnant then by the rays of the sun, and then later she had this little baby, they named him Tammuz. Now here's where we meet the little Ishtar bunny. Tammuz was noted to be especially fond of rabbits. He really liked the little bunny rabbits. And they became sacred in the ancient religion. I mean, after all, Tammuz was considered to be the kid of the new sun god, now named Baal. You know, Tammuz, like his supposed daddy Nimrod, became a really good hunter. Later one day, when Tammuz grew up and was 40 years old, he was actually killed by a wild boar while out hunting. And Ishtar, being the uh, eternal sex goddess of the sun, used the rabbit that Tammuz likes so much in her religion as a sign of sexual desire and fertility. Now, rabbits are still a sign of sexual desire and fertility to this day. That, that's pretty much common knowledge. We all know about that. Now, Easter, by the time her son's Tammuz was killed, was worshipped as the mother of God and the queen of heaven. She, she continued to build her mystery religion and proclaimed this 40-day period of time of sorrow each year prior to the anniversary of the death of her son Tammuz. During this time of 40 days, no meat was to be eaten. If you want more on this weeping for Tammuz, you can read about it and what God has to say about it. In Ezekiel chapter 8, he kind of condemns it a little bit. Ever since uh, Samaramis instituted her Babylonian mystery religion all across the world, every year on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, a sunrise mass or sacrifice was made to Easter, in which the priest of Easter would impregnate virgins on the altar at sunrise. Those virgins then became pregnant, and a year later, that next coming spring around the time of Easter, those infants were usually about three months old, and they would be sacrificed on the altar of Easter, and the priests would then dye Ishtar's eggs in their blood. You'd think that this practice would be dead, but it's not dead. We all know that that practice is not dead still very much alive and well today. The March 21st sacrifice 
itself to the goddess Ostara, which is another name for Easter, is still on the Luciferian and Satanic calendar of occult holidays, even to this day. Now, these sick practices are strongly condemned by the God of the Hebrew scriptures anyways. As even the, the children of Israel, they got deceived into doing it for a time. But now we would never fall for something like that. I mean, after all, we've got it all figured out, don't we? I warned you. I've done it again. I warned you, but did you listen to me? Oh, no, you knew it all, didn't you? Oh, it's just a harmless little bunny, isn't it? Well, it's always the same. I always oh, tell shut them. Up. Do they listen to me? Hey. Oh, no. Shut oh. up!